they completed the best project for AI features um, with team members Omar. Um, did I just win my first f hackathon? Let's go back a little bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. What even is a hackathon? A hackathon is a very exciting event where teams of up to four come together to compete to solve one problem slash challenge slash farm slash activity. And they all do it in one place with a period ranging from 24 to 36 hours. Just coding. Well, not really just coding. A lot of people are there for the free food, networking, making friends. But I am thrilled to say that I have been invited to one of those events. It's artificial intelligence space and it's gonna be going on for 36 hours. I've seen a lot of videos out there about hackathons, but none of them really dive deep in the nitty gritty of what really happens in there. So my duty today is to serve the people and give them what they want. The way I'm gonna document my experience is by summarizing every hour that goes by in a 30 to 60 second video. As an amateur, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of information to learn. So grab a snack, sit down, relax, and enjoy me on this exciting experience of me building something innovative and cutting edge, hopefully. Don't forget to take notes because you might as well just learn something new. And let's go. Uh, make sure to join the Discord. Um, this is where we'll post all announcements. You'll have over a day to hack. There is no restriction on the types of projects that you can create. It is sort of open to your imagination and sort of whatever you want to create. Purpose of a hackathon is for you to sort of code, program a project, network with the different industry partners like we have uh, back there with AI Futures. Obviously AI is like a super big field and everyone doesn't know everything. So this is sort of like chance to dive into a topic that like you don't have too much experience for it and we'll have mentors throughout the day and we'll have judges on Sunday to sort of evaluate your progress and sort of see how you do and provide any feedback. All right, first hour's been knocked out. We got introduced to the different sponsors for this place. Lots of snacks and food, and most importantly, coffee. For the prompt, we were uh, given two options. We can either tackle the main problem, which is utilizing the function of AI in any way possible we want, or we can do the subtask, which is they have given us a database, and we are supposed to utilize that database in order to implement the functionality of AI. It's a really heavy database, and this one is a little bit constrained to a specific boundary. I'm right here with one of the team members, Aryan. What's up? It's Aryan. Right now, our current task is to tackle all the information, the documents, the resources they have given us, and try to really understand what they want us to do. So, yeah, go do it. About two hours in, I was about to eat, but before we do that, we're gonna head to a Python workshop. That's where they gave you an introduction to Python in relation to their mission or to the event. But before we do that too, I'm gonna explain what had happened. After reading about both problems, we chose the main problem. And to simply explain this, we were given a bunch of data. This data included some images on XView. What is XView? Think of XView as a gallery for super high quality satellite images, such as those ones, which are the ones that we were given. Bodies like surveillance services, human relief organization, and defense systems use that gallery. Now our mission is to use the specific gallery they gave us to enhance slash implement the technology of AI in detecting objects in those images. So for example, AI would be able to detect using one of those images how many cars are in X area, how many buildings are in X areas, and many other objects. 60 objects to be specific. One part of tackling this problem is that I went on ChatGPT and I asked it for reference problem for people who had already worked on similar projects. And using those references, I was able to locate the algorithm that the team with the best results had already used. To give you an idea of those results, they were 0.4 MAP. The closer you are to zero with that number, the better. 0.46 is really good. 
The algorithm is called RetinaNet, and the reason it's good is because in AI, when they're detecting images, they draw a square on each object. Let's say it's a car. This algorithm minimizes the error percentage, so the square or the rectangle is exactly on that car. Nothing more, nothing less. So yeah, we're gonna implement this information, and I'm gonna go get a meal, go to the workshop, and update you guys. We are 13 hours in. This might sound like an exaggeration, but the amount of knowledge that's been thrown at me in the past few hours feels like I've fast forwarded a couple years in my major. And in life, not gonna lie. Two things though. One, turns out there's three problems, not two. And the second thing, I was able to solve the new problem all by myself. I'm like that, which was pretty awesome. Here's a little lovely clip of that moment. All right, moment of truth. Will I show up on the map? Did I show up on the map? I did! <laughs> Let's go! Yeah. Awesome. 10 star general. 10 star. That bump took a big chunk of my time. To concisely explain the problem, there's what is called a software defined radio. SDR for short. Think of it as a radio, except you don't need the special hardware to connect to other devices around you, which is a feature required to connect to networks like the internet. SDRs are most commonly used by the military. One of the ways they use it is by, let's say, you're in deployment. Soldiers are able to keep track of each other's location by viewing them as pinpoints on a device that they would carry around, just like a UAV in Call of Duty. What I did here is using the earlier satellite images from XView and the help of Python to generate an algorithm that would extract the coordinates of the center point of that image on a real world map. So in a video where I completed the mission, the image was some area in India. The reason we are able to do this is because the file format for these images is in TIFF, which is different from JPEG or PNG. Then we connected the code from Python Python to a platform called Node Red. Stay with me. Stay with me. Node Red displays my location as pinpoints on a real time map, connecting me with everyone else's pinpoints. Crazy, right? Anyways, the place is slowly dying, but we got tons of pizza and snacks, so that should keep us up for a couple more hours. So let's get back into it. It's about 12.30 right now, we called it a night. I grabbed some food and I'm heading home. We don't have much else to do but to organize the data and prepare for our presentation tomorrow. So I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. project from last night. I have changed the purpose of it to a very interesting one instead. Pretty much first responders in Syria and Turkey with the tragically situation that they're in can use it to sort every neighborhood in the affected areas into two categories. Either rescued slash completed or needs assistance. Using the help of AI, Python, and SDRs, ambulances for example can automatically identify which areas need the most help, prioritizing by the area type, such as hey the cities need the most help then schools then towns etc and the damage level we are also finalizing our presentation for this part of the event which is about four hours long 30 minutes per judge six judges so let's wrap up
team members Omar and Aaron. Um, I think, uh, w especially with the data, it was really hard to configure. Um, the data is pretty complex, so they were able to create the best project, so congrats to them. Yo, <laughs> back to the same place we started. What a surreal experience, honestly. As a reflection, I think the long-term value of this is going to be more important than right now because of the amount of information and I'm going to be able to connect the dots later on. Saying so, I made notes on the information that I learned and I'm definitely going to be... Oh... As I was saying, I made notes about it and I'm definitely going to review it later on. But would I do it again? I would definitely do it again, but I would not do two things. One is rely on Red Bull coffee and snacks to fuel my energy instead of like taking a 10 minute nap instead. And two is actually getting eight hours of sleep that night to prepare for the last few hours because I felt like it was crucial to stay awake and concentrated. And after the event, I was highly unproductive and tired. So I would definitely see it again. But hopefully you were able to learn something new about the environment of a hackathon. What is a hackathon, the opportunities that come with it and all that. And without further ado, I will see you guys later. Not going crazy yet. <laughs>